Here's a big integration question with several parts to it, so it's worth in total 15 marks. Let's go through each part separately. Part A. Show that the substitution u is sine x transforms this integral into this integral. Okay, there are no limits here, so nothing to worry about in that regard. So if u is equal to sine x, let's firstly do a bit of differentiating. To u by dx would be equal to cos x. So, uh, let's say dx as the subject is going to be du over cos x. Okay, and let's also, while we're at it, why don't we just um, change everything in terms of u's. Now, if u is equal to sine x, then cos x must be equal to 1 minus sine squared x square rooted, which is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus u squared. So therefore dx here is going to be du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. I think now we're in a position to uh, transform, transform this integral. So the integral therefore of 6 over cos x 2 subtract sine x dx is going to be the integral that 6 stays where it is cos x, I'm going to write that as the square root of 1 minus u squared. 2 minus sine x, I'm going to write that as 2 minus u. And dx is going to be du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Now, as you can see, the square root of 1 minus u squared multiplied by the square root of 1 minus u squared is just 1 minus u squared. So this is the integral of 6 over 1 subtract u squared, 2 minus u du just as required for four marks. Easy. Okay, part B, express this in partial fractions. Now you should realize that six over one subtract u squared, this thing here, is actually what you need to realize is that is a difference of two squares. It is actually one subtract u, one plus u, and clearly we've also got two subtract u here. Okay, so this was a little spot that you were supposed to see, a, a difference of two squares. So as three distinct linear factors, that's going to be equal to a over one subtract u plus b over one plus u plus c over two subtract u. Our next line can therefore be that six must be equal to a one plus u two subtract u plus b one subtract u two subtract u plus c 1 subtract u, 1 plus u. Okay, so let's do substitution. Let's let, I don't know, let's say u equal 1 to start with. Let u be equal to 1. We would have 6. Uh, this would disappear and this would disappear. would be equal to a, 2 multiplied by 1, which is 2a. So this tells us that a must be equal to 3. Let's let u equal 2, let's say. This disappears, this disappears, and we get 6 is equal to um, C, 1 subtract 2 is negative 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So negative 3C is 6. This tells us that C must be equal to negative 2. And finally, let's let U equal negative 1. We'd have 6. This would disappear, and this would disappear. So we'd just be left with B. 1 subtract negative 1 is 2. 2 subtract negative 1 is 3. So this is 6b, this is telling us that b is clearly equal to 1. And so we have found ourselves uh, the answer for this particular question here. So expressing this in partial fractions, so 6 over 1 subtract u squared 2 subtract u is therefore equal to 3 over 1 subtract u uh, plus 1 over 1 plus u subtract 2 over to subtract u. And I have got my answer there. I've split that into partial fractions and I can be confident that I've done that right and that's all good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this partial fraction onto the next slide because um, obviously I'm integrating this in a second so I'm going to need to, to know what the partial fractions were. That was a 2 there. So the last part was hence evaluate the following integral. Okay, now from part A, I knew that this integral 
from part A transform between the integral of 6, 1 minus u squared, 2 minus u. So 6, 1 minus u squared, 2 subtract u, du. L making the substitution, if I let u equal, uh, I don't know, what did I let it equal? Sin x, I got the following. Now we need to change the limits, that's the only thing we need to be careful of. When x is equal to zero, zero u is sine zero, which again is zero. And when x is equal to pi by 6, u is equal to sine of pi by 6, which is actually equal to a half. So the limits change between 0 and a half. Now, by part b, I could write this in uh, the expression inside the integral in partial fractions. It would be 3 over 1 subtract u, plus 1 over 1 plus u, subtract 2 over 2 subtract u, all with respect to u. And now I can integrate, so I can integrate this, and this would be negative 3 ln of 1 subtract u. This would be plus ln of 1 plus u. And this here would be uh, plus 2 ln of 2 subtract u. All of that between a half and 0. Okay, so let's put in uh, a half and zero. So this is going to be equal to, uh, firstly, negative three ln uh, a half plus ln three and a half, uh, 1.5, plus two ln three and a half, as follows. And then I can put zero in, subtract the answer. When I put zero in, I'd get negative uh, three ln one, if I put 0 in here, I get plus ln 1, and if I put 0 in here, I get plus 2 ln 2. Now, ln 1 is disappears. There's nothing to those. So, let's try and tidy up anymore. Let's keep this as it is. This is negative 3 ln a half. Ln 3 over 2 plus 2 lots of ln 3 over 2 is plus 3 lots of ln 3 over 2. And here, we have negative 2 ln 2. Okay, now what can we do to try and tidy this up somewhat? Um, uh, firstly, what we could do is we could... Um, how do we, what form do we want this in? We want in ln2 and ln3 where a and b are integers. Firstly, I could write this as negative 3 ln 2 to the power of minus 1. Okay? And I could also... Uh, I leave that as it is for now and leave that as it is for now. Now, I could bring down the power of minus 1, so these would cancel, and it would be plus 3 ln 2, plus 3 ln 3 over 2, subtract 2 ln 2. Now what I could do is I can factorise that 3, and we've got ln 2 plus ln 3 over 2, subtract 2 ln 2. I can, When I'm adding luns, I can multiply them, so this is going to be 3 if I multiply these two together, 2 times uh, 1.5 is simply 3, so I'm going to get ln 3 here, minus 2 ln 2. So my answer seems to be 3 ln 3, subtract 2 ln 2, and that is my final integral, and it's correct, and we're done.